Seth, the whole question of time travel, wormholes through space, is populates science fiction, and common people like to talk about those things. But scientists really can use these concepts of probes of our understanding of the laws of physics. So as you look at the laws of physics from your view, particularly from a computational universe point of view, how do you look at the possibility of time travel and these strange ways of skipping through space? Well, we're traveling through time right now. We just happen <laughs> to be traveling forward through time, and nobody seems to think this is remarkable. But it strikes me as already rather remarkable <laughs> that we're traveling forward through time, right? And heck, I can even travel through time faster, right? And, uh, there's you know, perfectly legitimate ways of traveling forward through time so that it is less onerous. You can hop on a spaceship, zip off, it's close to the speed of light, right. come back, right? And lots of uh, stuff has happened in the meanwhile where you only aged a few hours or days. So I guess you must mean traveling backwards in time when you're talking about time travel. Uh, and, and, and doing it in a, in a more controlled manner, like uh, if you would go at the speed of light, uh, you know, you can, you can, only a few of your years would pass when lots of years on Earth would have passed, yeah. but, but you can't control that to where to go back and forth. Yeah, well, you have to be careful about going backwards in time, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, there's all this famous paradox, the grandfather sure, paradox, sure. right, where you go back in time, accidentally meet your grandfather, you happen to shoot him. Why, why, why people always do this is bizarre. Right. I mean, if I met my grandfather in the past, I would want to have a beer with him, not shoot him for crying out loud. What, what kind of idiocy is that? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so, so, and then, of course, you have something that's inconsistent, right? But there are theories that say it may be possible to have information or matter being sent back in time and still be a self-consistent fashion. That's not impossible. Well, I've heard uh, the many worlds interpretation being used to try to solve the grandfather paradox that maybe there's a, a, another world splits off in which grandfather dies and the one that grandfather lives is the one that uh, you, know, you eventually will come from in some weird yeah, way. That actually is, is, is pr probably a pretty uh, reasonable idea. And I think- I, I didn't think it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very unreasonable, okay? So, you know, the many worlds here of quantum mechanics, the, there's the notion that at every instant in time, the universe is splitting up into all different yeah. possible worlds. So right. everything that can happen does happen in one of these worlds. Yeah. So maybe then if you went back in time, you arrive at this instant again, you kill your grandfather, fine, you're just in another world. Yeah, okay, right, right, fine. Right. So instead of going, ending up back where you started out, you yeah. end up at looping off to another place. Right, right. So that certainly helps with this uh, grandfather paradox. And that's not, not inconceivable. Um, and in fact, uh, 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 this idea of using funky features of quantum mechanics, like the many worlds theory, um, to have time travel happen has some merit. In fact, there are very specific models in which time travel or going backwards in time can in fact happen um, uh, based on ideas from quantum information theory. How would that conceivably work? Well, so, so just to make it even weirder, it happens <laughs> when you have a black hole. So, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, right. so this also, it's, it gives you a mechanism, these ideas from quantum information give you a mechanism whereby black holes can evaporate and still have the information of what formed them escape. So there's a famous problem about black holes, right. which is a black hole, you know, something that's so massive that light itself can't right, escape. Sure. So anything that goes in can't come out. They're the roach motels of the <laughs> cosmos, right? right? right. <laughs> check in, but you don't check out. Bits check in, but they don't check out. But yet at the same time, um, they can evaporate. So Hawking taught us that black holes are radiating. A big black hole radiates very, very slowly, but it, nonetheless, there's radiation coming out. The radiation looks completely random. And Hawking thought that all the information about what had gone into the black hole was completely destroyed. And so none of the information about what it went in comes out. And indeed, it's very hard to get information to come out of a black hole be just because, you know, light, even light can't get out. Sure. And if information can only travel at the right. speed of light, well, then information can't get out. So it's tough to figure out how information could escape. But uh, a couple of years ago, um, uh, two physicists, Gary Horowitz and uh, Juan Malvasena, came up with an alternative suggestion um, for how black holes might evaporate. 
And in their model, it's quite possible for information to go into the black hole. The black hole evaporates, and then the information escapes. And in fact, I also did a bunch of work on this and showed that their mechanism, their model, was in fact robust. So mm. that they didn't require any kind of fine tuning of the laws of physics. It's what you'd in general expect to happen when a black hole evaporates. So what's the implication of that? Well, so first of all, it means for in order to, to get, have information escape from a black hole, that's equivalent to being able to go backwards in time. Uh. This is why I brought up uh -huh. black holes evaporating. Uh. Because if, you're going, if you can go faster than the speed of light, effectively faster than the speed of light, then you can travel backward in time. Right. This is the problem with going faster right, than right. the speed of light. It gives rise to all sorts of paradoxes. So the relationship to time travel is black hole evaporation and time travel are intimately related oh. to each other. So <clears throat> that's one thing. That's the first part. Now the other implication, of course, which is dear to my heart, is it means you could use black holes as some kind of computers, right? Because you send this information in, <laughs> something horrible happens to it in the singularity of the center <laughs> of the black hole, but radiation comes out, and actually what is this radiation but the information that went in in processed form? So the black hole is effectively computing. So you can find out about a black hole in that because you're finding out what's happening in the black box by knowing what the input is and what the output is? Exactly, that's right. So the black hole behaves like a black box. <laughs> and normally they're kind of a round sort of box, <laughs> yeah, box right? Yeah. Not, not a square yeah, kind of right. box. Yeah, that's right. So, so, and in fact, the way that this horowitz maldacena mechanism works is intimately related to problems in quantum computation and quantum communication. Hmm. In fact, it's a variation on what's called quantum teleportation. This is a great topic because we get to talk about everything. We talk yeah. about time travel, we talk about black holes evaporating, we talk about teleportation, right. it all fits all right. together. So right. Tell me about teleportation. Yeah, so teleportation. That's sort of like a wormhole. It's a way to get from one place to another without having to spend time in the intervening space. Absolutely. It's right. So it, they're all, it's all linked, right? Actually, they, in fact, they are all linked. It's not just a conspiracy, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, in teleportation, the idea is, you know, Kirk shows up here, steps in the teleporter. He's, you know, disintegrated, <laughs> right? But the information about what he was beforehand is still there, gets sent to some other place, and then he is reintegrated in this far place, mm -hmm. and there he is, he's teleported from here to there. Now, as I described it, um, sort of conventional Star Trekian teleportation, mm -hmm. uh, you can't necessarily go faster than the speed of light because you've got to send the information okay. from one place to another. And in quantum mechanics, the way teleportation works is very much like that. You bring in some quanta, like an elementary particle or two, you make a measurement on them together with some other junk, okay? And then you get this classical bits of information. You send them to some other place where some other junk exists that was intimately related to the junk you made the measurement on beforehand. And then you reconstitute your original quantum at this right, far right, end. Right, right, right. Just like ordinary teleportation. Right, right. So the way that the horowitz maldacena mechanism works is like teleportation, except you never have to send the information. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> so in, this, in quantum teleportation, what happens is you make a measurement, you get some bits of information, and every now and then, in order to, to reintegrate your quantum at the far end, you don't have to do anything. According to this information, just let it be, it's still the same quantum that it was. <laughs> well, in this horowitz maldacena model of black hole evaporation, what happens is at this, when the, the information inside the black hole gets destroyed, then you happen to be in the state where you don't have to do anything. You're your information is, has escaped from the black hole in a processed form. So as you look at this total picture of all these weird ideas of time travel, wormholes, quantum teleportation, is there anything uh, beyond just theoretical interest here? Do you think there's some practical implication of this uh, in the future? Sure, absolutely. So, so for instance, this theory of, of, uh, of this horowitz maldacena mechanism, right? That's something that might conceivably be tested. There are ideas that it might be possible to make little tiny black holes, say, in the, uh, the LHC, the, the Large Hadron Collider, mm. over at CERN, if that's indeed the case. And mind you, this relies on some pretty speculative physics, mm. so I wouldn't bet on <laughs> it, right? But if that's the case, then we ought to be able to test if this theory is correct. Mm. We ought to be able to test to see, you know, pop in some bits, see if the stuff that comes out of the black hole is related to the bits that we popped in. But as for actually building a time machine, <laughs> well, you know, when I was in, at, a graduate student at Cambridge, I, my grandmother, who was 90 years old, came over to visit, and she said, so Seth, what are you working on? Could it have any implications? And I said, well, maybe the only implication would be 
building a time machine. Mm -hmm. And she said, better hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I, I'll, I think that uh, if your time machine involves untested speculative theories and the way to travel backwards in time is first you have to jump into this black <laughs> hole, well, I think we may mm -hmm. take a while before we find takers. Certainly I wouldn't be the first one to do it, mm -hmm. even if it were my own theory and I believed in it implicitly.